What is it about copper that made it uniquely suited to everyday currency and smaller but vital purchases like a loaf of bread or a ride across town? Today I'll be delving into the history of copper and coinage and currency. More importantly, we'll explain why this shiny reddish-orange metal could similarly become invaluable in a post-apocalyptic world. Hello fellow mutants. Copper has a rich history as a currency and coinage material. From ancient civilizations to modern economies, this versatile metal has played a crucial role in the facilitation of trade and commerce. Let's begin with its historical significance. Pure copper coins were used as a medium of exchange for thousands of years. Today we see them less commonly in pure form for what denominations of currency were once of copper due to the increase in cost of the metal. In other words, the smallest forms of fiat currency used today, having been devalued through inflation, are no longer worth their weight in copper. From what I've gathered, in 1980, the value of copper in a penny exceeded its face value. Today, to differentiate coins and keep with their historical denominations visually, they are coated in copper. This kopeck from Belarus, for example, is steel coated with copper. And pennies in the United States, of course. While many people think they are copper, are similarly composed of zinc with a copper coating. As I've stated before, even pennies moved away from the pure copper in the 1800s, and pre-1982 pennies typically have been an alloy of zinc or tin, therefore bronze or brass. But for thousands of years across the world, copper coins traded hands. Ancient civilizations such as the Mesopotamians, Egyptians, and Romans recognized the value of copper. These coins weren't just a means to buy goods and services, they were symbols of economic power and societal advancement. Copper was not abundant everywhere, for example, in the North America, where tribes had other forms of currency, such as wampum, which I've done a video on in the past if you're interested. Copper's value lies not only in its rarity, but also in its practicality. It's abundant and easily malleable and resistant to corrosion, making it an ideal choice for coinage. Beyond coins, copper had countless applications in daily life, from tools to architectural elements. In essence, it's a metal that can withstand the test of time. Now let's fast forward to a potential post-apocalyptic world. Whether it's a war-ravaged world or one that slips into dystopia, the luxuries of our previous lives are gone and our monetary system has collapsed. In this new reality, people may well revert to primitive forms of trade and bartering. The problem with goods for goods barter is that not all goods you may have for trade are easily portable and not everyone will need another box of eggs or a handful of bolts. Copper coins used for daily purchases historically were relatively lightweight, making them easy to carry and transport, which was essential for trade in ancient times when people often had to travel long distances to engage in commerce. Imagine a world without gasoline. Would you be able to get everything locally? Would you want to lug some boxes of eggs or other goods for goods to trade? So, inevitably, with the exception perhaps of the most self-sufficient of mutual assistance communities, the need for a currency arises to allow for something portable to have in your pocket and trade. In the absence of traditional currencies, what can hold value? The answer lies in the enduring qualities of precious metals and copper. Silver and gold would hold a place higher up the rungs for trade for things that cost around $30 and $2,000 in today's currency, respectively, when measured by ounce. Copper in the form of pure copper coins has a unique set of qualities that can make it invaluable in a post-apocalyptic society. It's durable, recognizable, and most importantly, it has intrinsic value. Copper is also highly malleable and ductile for coinage, given a relatively low requirement for heat to anneal and can even be struck into coinage, meaning it can be easily shaped and formed into coins of various designs. 
This characteristic made it ideal for early coin minting, as it allowed for the creation of intricate and standardized coinage without advanced technology. One can imagine how this might be useful in the future as well, when Lord Humongous or Immortan Joe want to mint their own currency in the crumbled ruins of civilization. But, on a serious note, you can find videos around of people using presses and even a stump and a hammer and a form to hammer out coins. One might think that a dystopian cyberpunk world might make physical currency obsolete. We are already seeing a shift to plastic, cell phones, and crypto, and most people have yet to experience a week or more without power when those things would not work very well. But what if that dystopian government insists on tracking every movement of citizens through open blockchain type technology? What if they start to measure your resource utilization and penalize you or prevent you from consuming what some unelected bureaucrat thinks is too much? We've certainly seen moves towards something like this in other countries around the world. What if the act of prepping itself is seen as hoarding, and that currency that tracks your purchases identifies you as a hoarder? When currencies and purchasing privacy are no longer reliable or guaranteed like a tangible asset, this is where a physical currency can still come in. And if the use of government issue fiat currencies is halted in favor of something like a Fed coin, then untraceable alternative physical currencies will eventually arise. In times of currency shortages, improvised unofficial ones come into being, as they did with the so called hard times tokens I covered recently here on of the early to mid 1800s. Bullion, whether it's silver, gold, or copper, transcends language and technology barriers, making it an ideal medium of exchange for essential goods and services, just as it once was. There will be naysayers and those resistant to using copper rounds for trade, sure. But at least locally you can have an option to prepare for trade of small goods. You might even do as I do and soften up the local economy if you live in a small town by giving out copper rounds on top of tips at local restaurants, the movie theater waiter, or to your barber. I'll touch on that idea in the future. The ability to melt down and recast copper coins as tokens for trade again ensures their lasting value. Even if the world as we know it crumbles, copper's worth will endure. And, in a pinch, you can make copper into tools, as I covered in a pinned and popular video on my channel from about a year ago. So, whether you're a seasoned prepper or just beginning to consider the value of precious metals in a post-apocalyptic world, pure copper rounds may be an invaluable addition to your preparations. I dabble in pure copper currencies from a numismatic perspective as well, and of course I suggest a little silver, titanium, and platinum. The rule about gold here is that we don't talk about gold. We lost it somewhere in the desert. Well, that's all I had for today. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Stay prepared, stay vigilant, and we'll see you in the next episode, where we continue our journey through the world of post-apocalyptic prepping and precious metals. I even have a couple of gaming videos I've long wanted to release. Not video games, but games nonetheless. And, of course, fitting the whole apocalyptic image and mutant theme, I hope you've had a chance to catch up with Johnny Apocalypse Seed as well. Until next time, it's Copper Mutant, signing out. Thank you.